church, how's everybody doing? Good. We really do have the most beautiful church. We do. Good morning, everybody watching online, everybody in Ringe. I'm sure you're beautiful as well. Uh, if I were to see your face. My name is Megan Martins. I'm here on the greeting team and I just wanted to welcome you this morning and I have a couple of announcements for you. If everybody could please silence their phone so that it doesn't go off during service and everybody turns and looks at you, that would be beautiful. Um, who was here last week and was able to get one of our shirts or sweatshirts that we had on sale? Yes. So we have our beautiful um, model here with the shirt. So we have them online still. If you were not here and you were not able to buy them, we have them on sale at outreachchurch.net. And we're also gonna have them on sale um, next Sunday in the foyer. So if you'd rather try it on, um, buy it in person, we're gonna have it next week as well. Where are my ladies at? I, I love when I do a men's breakfast announcement because we don't get that kind of a Welcome. We, every, every woman has a little bit of a woo girl inside of her. I love it. So we're going to have a women's Bible study that's going to be starting um, on September the 5th. It's going to be a seven-session Bible study. Um, it's going to be held here at Monaghan. It starts at 7 p.m. The doors are going to open at 645. It's a study called 2020 by Christine Kane. Um, to find the registration link, if you go to outreachchurch.net, you're going to select which campus. Um, and the registration link can be found in the events drop-down menu. So if you would please register for that ahead of time, you're also gonna buy your workbook. You can either buy it at Lifeway or you can buy it on Amazon. Um, and it's not just a outreach event, so you are more than welcome. Please invite a friend if you have a lady who you love, somebody who you uh, go to work with and you wanna invite them, that would be wonderful. If you have any questions, you can always ask out in the foyer, anybody who's on the greeting team. Um, we have boxes out if you wanted to give on your way out. If you look for the outreach black boxes, there's two outside in the foyer and there's one by the kids exit. You can give um, your tithes and offerings that way. I'm going to invite all of you to please stand with us. I'm so glad that we get to come to the house of the Lord and give him all of the glory. We get to wake up each morning with a God whose face is always turned towards us and he invites us just to look at his smile. So I'm gonna invite you guys into prayer and worship.
this week, the Lord has just been all over me. And there's just things in my life I've been going through. Last week, that word that Andy had about being stuck, that was me. And I still stayed stuck where I was standing last week. But then after Sunday, the Lord was just like, why are you stuck? You can come to me. Stop being stuck. You're stuck because you're keeping yourself stuck. I'm holding out my hand. And you're drowning in the waves right now when you can walk on the water with me. <laughs> and, so, and so, just pour out your praise to him. Declare his greatness because that is who he is. And that is who he made you to be. You don't have to drown in the waves and you don't have to be stuck. So just pour out your praise this morning as we continue. Just declare his goodness. Thank you, God, for your gratefulness for your faithfulness. You're worthy.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow, praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son.
to him.
Come on, he's, he's not on a cross anymore. He's not on the cross. I was looking at the cross during worship, like, he's not on there anymore. He's not in the tomb. It said he rose and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And that righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. And it says he's exalted on the praises of his people. So when we exalt him in our circumstances, righteousness and justice are released into those areas that we're facing. When we're facing difficulty, struggling with shame and condemnation or lies, going through a difficult trial, when we exalt him, we establish his throne in our lives and righteousness and justice are released. Come on, so I just wanna sing that just real fast one more time. And whatever you're facing, know this, there's a promise. When you lock eyes on Jesus and you look at the slain lamb that's now sitting on a throne, that there's nothing between you and him and that he wants to release his righteousness into situations that you're facing. And I felt Isaiah 54, we've heard it so many times, but there's a lie that I've wasted so much in my life. I'm so far gone that I can never be restored. To, there's, there's a cap to what the Lord could do with my life. And that verse says that the children of the desolate woman will become more than those of a natural woman. And there's something that happens when you yield yourself to the Lord and to the Spirit of God. He's able to take years and years of brokenness and bondage, and he's able to restore it more. Somehow he does it. Heavenly math doesn't make sense. He's able to restore it beyond what would happen if you just naturally had lived your life. And so as we just praise the Lord, I want you to know, no matter how stuck you've been, how long you've been stuck in an area, willingly giving yourself to sin, if you repent and turn to the Lord and worship Him and exalt Him, He can restore all the years that the locusts had stolen and make it greater than if you had just lived your life. All right, so let's exalt the Lord one more time. Come on, thank you. Keep
Come on, I'm telling you. I was stuck in an addiction. I was addicted to pornography for so long, so much of my childhood. High school, middle school, high school, college, after college, I was stuck in bondage and shame. I hated it. And the Lord came and he set me free. Like totally free, like free, free, free. Like Liberty Mutual, like free, free, free. I'm telling you, no matter how stuck you feel, nothing is greater than the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, it says in scripture, we're gonna get to heaven and we're gonna see the enemy. And we're saying, that's the one? That's the one that helped me in bondage for so, him? Because when we see the Lord rightly, we see dimly now, but when our eyes are open and we see him exalted, all authority is sitting on that throne. Come on, I just feel like the Lord just wants to encourage us. This is not the end, no matter what we're facing. Come on, 50 years of addiction, of living less than what the Lord paid for can be redeemed in a moment. Redeemed in a moment. And he can take all of those years and he can restore them. And it says in scripture, beyond what we can even think, ask, or dare to imagine. Like if I could visualize, just think about something of, oh, this is what it would look like to be redeemed and be restored. That's as far as that imagination could take me. That's not even where he wants to start. Because it says beyond that, beyond what you, the craziest cry in your heart of like, Lord, if you could just do this. That's a drop in the bucket of what the Lord wants to do in your life. Because he paid the highest price for you to be restored and to be redeemed to right standing with him. Come on, so I just want to pray for all of us. So Father, I thank you. Spirit of God, we acknowledge that you're here to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captive free, to proclaim the year of your favor. So we acknowledge you, Jesus. We acknowledge your Lordship. Lord, and every name is gonna bow on that day. But we want every name that isn't yours in our life to bow today. We don't wanna have to wait. Every voice of shame and condemnation, of regret, discouragement, God, we want that knee to bow today to your name. We love you, Lord. We ask that you'd come and have your way. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Wow. I feel like we can go home now. Well, good morning. I'll be honest, I'm ready for summer to be over. Amen. Lord. Uh, Roy and Patty asked me to send their love. They're up in New Hampshire today. Um, they went up on, I think, Tuesday morning, and they've spent a longer time this trip, and they said it's been incredible. On Wednesday, they did a youth event that Roy actually got to speak at. They invited all the families um, in the youth group to come to the baseball field. They did s'mores, had a, a bonfire is an understatement. Like this entire center section was the fire. So <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. But Roy got to just preach the gospel and a lot of people responded, new families showed up. And he just said, the Lord is doing incredible. So the Lord is amazing what he's doing. Um, and he, he's excited to preach. He says, the weather up there is beautiful. He's not gonna 
be excited about coming back to 90 degree or 90% humidity, but they send their love. They'll be back today. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, my name's David Pearson. I'm one of the pastors here. Um, this shouldn't take long. It's 9.50. We'll be out here by two, probably. <laughs> so it will be good. So there should be still some food left over at the buffets. Um, but I'm, I'm excited. I feel like the Lord just put a really, really simple word in my heart this week. And I'm excited to share. It's something that he's been kind of just speaking to me over the last couple of weeks. And I just want to invite you into that. Um, if you want to put up 1 Corinthians, that verse. So this is a bit of a sledgehammer of a verse. Um, so 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal and as to babes in Christ. I feed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able to, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and not behaving like mere men? Like another translation says this, I had to nurse you and I had to feed you with milk, not with the solid food of more advanced teaching, because you weren't ready for it. In fact, you're still not ready to be fed solid food? Are you living your lives dominated by the mindset of the flesh? Ask yourself, is there jealousy among you? Do you compare yourself with others? Do you quarrel like children and end up taking sides? If so, this proves that you're living your lives centered on yourself, dominated by the mindset of the flesh and behaving like unbelievers. That's pretty chipper. <laughs> Bunch of babes. But I read that, I, was, I think I just flipped open my Bible one day randomly and I read that and I tried to keep going, but it kind of like, have you ever been reading and you just, ah, and you're like, okay, like what are you trying to say? And I, I tried to keep reading past it, but that verse just kept kind of gnawing at me all week. And so I've been just sitting in it and I'm like, Lord, what are, you, what are you saying? And I felt like he had an invitation for me to to have an honest assessment and take inventory of my life Amen. yielded with his spirit. And it was sobering because I think there's, there's a temptation to judge ourselves with broad brush strokes. I know I do it. I'm like, oh, I'm a pretty patient person. And you, you brush patience over your whole life of kind of a pass fail. And the Lord's like, hey, I, I, wanna, I wanna work on some stuff. There's a lot of areas that you have moved on and I can, I can talk to you and we can talk about, this is more advanced teachings, but hey, David, there's some things that we, we gotta go back to the basics and we just gotta relearn some of those things. And just, it was, a, it was a reminder of some things that I knew, but when he spoke it again in a fresh way, it was super powerful and it caused me to do a lot of repentance this past week. And there's a couple other verses that he led me to along those same lines. Romans 8, 6, for the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. And I just started, as I was going through my day, asking myself, is there life right now? Is there peace right now in my life? And, and as I'm going, as I'm engaging with my kids as a father, as I'm interacting with my wife as a husband, as I'm at work, as I'm in community, in different areas, I just began to take an honest look and say, is there a life? Is there a peace? And the Lord, in his kindness, started putting his finger on a couple areas. It was amazing. And so that's, that's kind of what I want to unpack a little bit today. Uh, one more verse. Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, that a root of bitterness springs up and by which many will be defiled. And I was reading that, there's a commentary on it, that phrase, see to it, is actually the word for bishop or overseer. And it's the same word that's used in the New Testament for um, an office in the church. So it, it's basically, one pastor translates it, it's more of an analogy than translation, but it, he describes it as, you're the umpire. So see to it. 
Be the bishop of your own heart. Be the umpire of your own heart. And see to it that this and this doesn't happen, and by which many would be defiled. There's the verse, look over your heart with all due diligence, for from it flows the issues of life. So the Lord just kept popcorning all these different scriptures. We all know these scriptures. We've heard them many times. But he started breathing life in a fresh way. And he said, hey, I want, to, I want you to take inventory. And this kind of hit close to home. Um, has anybody worked retail? Come on, be proud. I know it's a source of shame, but just be proud. <laughs> anybody worked a warehouse job where you had to do it? Oh, come on, we know. So last year, I worked for eight months at Home Depot. And it's funny, I, I applied. to. I live right in Greer, so there's one five minutes from my house. I don't, do not know why, but I could not get a job there. But I got a job on the Woodruff Road one. So I had the joy for eight months of navigating Woodruff Road and being refined with the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious, you can get off 385 and not move for 10 minutes and watch all these little people just <laughs> break the law and you just have to sit there. Um, but I, I applied, I showed up and I said, hey, I, so I have like seven, almost 10 years of painting experience. I ran my own business, I, I know it pretty well. I said, perfect, we don't have painting, we have plumbing. Painting, plumbing, I'm like, sure, what's the difference? And so I, uh, I got a job in the plumbing department and I did all my computer training, which if, they, if they're watching, please ignore this, Home Depot. <laughs> on the training videos, you can right click on the settings and uh, hit playback speed two and a half times. <laughs> so, I blew through like a week of training in a, a day and a half. And that lady goes, wow, that was fast. I said, quick learner, I guess. <laughs> Don't tell anybody that. But um, then after my training, I went out on the floor and they said, hey, this is Sean. He's going to be kind of the guy that will show you the ropes. Sean goes, hey, David, this is, here you go. And he goes, I'll be honest, dude, I am so sick. I'm going home. He goes, it's yours. Just, you'll figure it out. And he walks off. I'm like, I'm literally the only person in plumbing my first shift. I'm just like, I had no idea. I still don't have an idea. Um, Joe, the drummer, he's, he's a plumber. He would come in all the time and he would just laugh because I was clueless for eight months. But anyways, um, I had the privilege of doing inventory and what inventory, how it works is they would hire a third party and they would just descend upon the store, like an army of ants, I mean, hundreds of them. And every single thing, they're just brrr, counting, doing all their little numbers. And we had a report of what we th thought we had. The store has like 40,000 different items. It's insane. And so they would count all of them and their report would come in. And if there was a discrepancy, it'd be like, hey, our report says this, the third party auditing says this. They would say, David, go to aisle nine, aisle 31, sorry, and check the toilet seats and count all the toilet seats. And so you would basically check your inventory and say, hey, this is what the report says. This is what this report says. Where's the truth? And so we did that for the entire store. It's a nightmare. And <clears throat> it's important because what happens is if your inventory is off, doesn't make happy customers. People would come, and if you have a plum, if you're coming to plumbing, you're already not in a good mood. Like no plumbing job is like, man, it's a great day. I'm gonna fix some plumbing. Like you're already grumpy, and then well, all, you are. <laughs> you've gone to three other stores, and then they're on the app, and they're like, oh, Woodruff Road has two left, and yeah. they come in, and then they ask you, the plumbing guy, who's supposed to be a certified expert in all things plumbing after a day of training. And they're like, hey, so I've spent the last four hours driving all up the upstate trying to find some parts. I've been to every hardware store. You're the only one that has it. It's an awkward moment when you have to explain to them, hey, be honest, inventory's not really right right now. Never a good conversation, all right? Anybody been there in retail? Not fun. So. I just began thinking about that, and I was like, 
How much is it like that with our walk with the Lord? Why do you have people coming in and they're like, I've just spent four hours looking for an answer and I've heard that you have the answer in stock and I'm coming to you because you're supposed to have the answer. And it's an awkward moment when what you claim to have in your inventory isn't actually there. And I just began to look and be like, oh, Lord, like, I want you to show me. Are there things that I know in theory and I claim on my inventory sheet? But when I actually stop, hold it up to the standard of the word, and that report actually says this, and my two reports are different. Lord, would you come and reconcile these two? Would you show me where the discrepancies are? So that when people come to me for him, they get him. And I've been so challenged. He's been putting his finger on things. And I'm just like, oh, Lord, I need you. I need these things to line up in my life. And so how? how? It's so simple. You hold up the standard of his word. The standard of his word. And you allow the light of his word to do what it does. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be fully equipped fully equipped so that the man of God, so that me as a father, as a husband, as an employee can have everything that I need to give away the gospel that I'm supposed to represent. You hold up the standard of his word. And it says in James, if you're looking for a book to read this next week, read James. James is one of my favorite books. He's just like, don't be an idiot. He's like, he's just so blunt. Um, but James, James 1, 21 says this. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, with humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your soul. But prove yourself a doer of the word and not merely a hearer, who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks at the mirror. For one, And once he has looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But the one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides in it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in whatever he does. I know we've heard this verse so many times, but a couple things, phrases leapt out of me this week. It says that we wouldn't be a hearer who delude themselves. That's a sobering phrase. Delude, delusion. That we wouldn't be someone that hears the word and deceives themselves and saying, yeah, that's me. Roy's, Roy's done so many sermons on the parable of the sower and how we judge ourselves as one of those things. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm good soil. And it's this pass fail test. But the Lord looks at every single area of your life and says, is that good soil? And so there's a temptation to hear, uh, we could quote all of these scriptures. We've all heard them so many times. So there's a temptation just to be like, oh yeah, I know that verse. And just check out and just keep on reading and delude ourselves and saying, yep, that's in my inventory, check plus. So we have to be so sober because there's a temptation that knowledge will puff up. It doesn't say worldly knowledge. It just says knowledge will puff up. And there's a temptation that we let the knowledge of the word insulate and isolate us from conviction and change 
because we've already, we know it. We can just, we know what's coming next. We know the next verse that's coming on the page and we can just go in autopilot. There's, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to read my word and I, I come back downstairs for another refill of coffee and I couldn't even tell you what I read two minutes ago. I've been on autopilot, just reading right through. It's such a temptation. So you have to stop and say, Spirit of God, you wrote this book. You live inside of me. Breathe on it again. And may it come alive. And do in me what you will with this word. So don't allow just familiarity with the scripture to delude yourself. One pastor says the nature of deception is that you don't know you're deceived. If you knew you're deceived, then that's just the spirit of stupid. I was like, I like that. Ephesians 4, 17 through 19 says this. So this I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened by their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of ignorance and because of hardness of heart. It's saying don't be like a non-believer that through hardness of heart, they miss the word of the Lord. And another, that translation is actually a calloused heart. A ca- how does a callous form? Through irritation, through pressure, and through just that constant rub. And if we allow the irritation and the pressure of life in an area just to keep rubbing on our hearts, this is a temptation just to let it callous and let us kind of insulate ourselves of like, oh, you know, I've read that, like what Roy talks about. I've, my experience is having a louder voice than the word of God. And that my experience again and again and again. Like as a kid, I had crazy anxiety. I had panic attacks all the time. I... I couldn't, I would play sports, but it, when it was my time for swim team, when it was my time to go to the heat, I would literally run to the bathroom and hide in the stall and would just miss my event because I had such anxiety. And I had all these scriptures. Oh, peace, 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 peace. And I was like, these two things don't line up. And I could have let the fact that, oh no, I'm just an anxious person have a louder voice than the gospel. I'm telling you, I am so set free yes. from that stuff. But I could have let my whole childhood have a louder voice than a promise of what's available. I could have let anxiety be a callous and cause my heart to be hard and me miss out on the fruit and the seed that the Lord wanted to plant in my life that could become a tree and bear fruit. And I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many people, it's it's cool how the Lord works, how he just brings people, ah, I need prayer. Like, oh, what's going on? Ah, anxiety. And I'm just like, yes. Because I'm a testimony of what the Lord's done. And there's a tree in my life that's bearing fruit. And I could have let the pressure and my heart become calloused and not allow the seed of his word to be implanted. And it says the implanted word has the ability to save your soul. It means to keep on saving, to continually save. It's, a, it's an ongoing thing. Your, your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your desire, what makes you you can be redeemed by a word if you allow your heart to stay tender. And then it can become a tree. Come on, it says in that verse in Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 15, be the bishop of your heart and make sure that you don't fall short of a revelation of grace and a root of bitterness rise up and by which many will be defiled. That's a sobering verse. Be careful that you don't miss the revelation of grace, which is the empowering presence of God. Don't fall short of the revelation 
of what's available and what he wants to do in your life because if you, if you fall short of that, the callous will start to form and bitterness will sink its roots. And that word root means a firmly established tree. It's not a cute little dandelion. It's a firmly established tree. And it says, by which many will be defiled. Because people are always eating the fruit of your life. And so if you allow that bitterness to creep in, many will be defiled. Many people will eat that fruit. And the goal of that fruit is to plant those seeds of bitterness in their life that that would become a firmly established tree and reproduce itself. And all of a sudden, you have an entire community that's bitter. The whole time, deceived, thinking they're walking in the truth. That's what's scary. But then the word, it says, in humility, receive the word. And look into the word. And you see yourself rightly like a man looking in a mirror saying, this is who I am. And when I was walking through my struggle with pornography, the Lord put it on my heart. Every time I walked by a mirror to stop, to look in the mirror, to look at myself and to speak life. And I would literally, it it sounds silly, but I'd be in the bathroom. I'd I'd, um, be at a restaurant. I'd stop and I'd just look and say, Lord, I thank you that that man is a man of purity, a man of victory, a man that's gonna be yielded to your spirit and you're gonna do a mighty work in my life. And I began to see myself rightly according to the word. And the word became implanted in my life and it, it began to uproot stuff and uproot deception and work on the calluses and the things that I had just become comfortable with and settled with and said, oh, I guess this just is the way that it is. And speaking the word, the written word, God, I thank you for this. I thank you in Colossians that it says I can put off the old. and I can put on Christ. Those words there, it, it literally means like to take off old nasty clothing to remove it and not just put it down, to put it far away out of reach from yourself. So I take off the old, I, t- I put it off and I put it out of reach of myself again and I put on, that word is a brand new garment that's just for you. I put on Christ and the righteousness of Christ, of who I am in him and what he says, and it says, be an effectual doer of the word. And when I I first heard that phrase, I was like, it's about doing the stuff. We're gonna take care of the widows and the orphans. We're gonna pray for the sick. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do, 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 do. And that's all in the book. That's all part of the, the package. But if you look at the New Testament, look at all of Paul's letters. What is the majority of the call to action. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Put off the old, put on Christ. So if you're an effectual doer of the word, what does it mean? It means to actually take the word and what's promised and what's available and apply it to situations that seem impossible. And just to say, that's the standard, not this. And you say, you know what? Like I've been doing this as a, recently as a father. I have two toddlers. I'm being tested and challenged in patience. I'm being refined. And I, I wake up every morning and the first thing I do is I, I go on a walk and I just, I walk my neighborhood. And I literally do this, I say, Father, I thank you. That you said children are, and my kids are amazing. I say, Father, I thank you that you gave me these kids. That of all the people on planet earth, you chose me to be their dad. And I thank you that you've given me a spirit of patience that I can represent you, that every time they interact with me, they can get a taste of you. Would you do a deep work in my life, God? I don't, I don't wanna respond today 
out of frustration or out of impatience? Would you do a work in me? And you, it's like you close the door and you get alone with the Lord. And I, in the morning when I'm on my walk, I'm putting off the old and I'm putting on Christ. And I'm like, I'm clothed in patience today. I'm clothed in righteousness. That when my kids come, they get a taste of the Lord's Father, the Father's love for them through my life. And I do that in every area. Father, I thank you for my marriage. I thank you for Annie. God, I pray that I'd never be insensitive to her today. God, every, I would see her rightly. That You called me to this and this and this. And what am I doing? I'm putting on Christ and I'm renouncing the former things that used to have dominion in my life because they're not who I am anymore. They were, but I've been given a new nature. Come on, we talk about this all the time. We're, when we get born again, we get a new nature, but we still, and in a moment, we're given the nature of Christ, but we're gonna spend the rest of our life with our souls being redeemed, our mind, our will, and emotions. And those are the things that you put off. Because right now, I fully have the nature of Christ. The Spirit of God, the full package, was given when I yield myself and surrendered. But the rest of my life is learning how to put off the old and put on Christ so that my thoughts, my dreams, my desire, my will, and my emotions represent what was freely given when we sign the deal. And so you put off. I, I just feel like there's, it's such a simple word, but I've noticed that I've settled in areas and I just, you're like, you know what? I'm doing pretty good. I feel like here and here I'm doing pretty good. And then the Lord held up the standard of his word and it wasn't condemnation that was speaking I felt the invitation of a father and conviction rising up and the spirit of God inside of me saying like, we can do this. And not allowing things to, that have become calloused and settled in my life. Come on, the, the word of the Lord, a double-edged sword, dividing soul, spirit, bone, marrow, revealing the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Come on, when you open up the word, he reveals your thoughts and the intentions of the heart and saying, hey, your inventory said this, my inventory said this, they're not the same. And it comes and it divides. And then you have the amazing thing of God, I just repent of this. That's not who I am. I'm so sorry for, for acting less than what you called me to. I'm gonna put you, put on Christ, clothed in righteousness today. And Spirit of God, thank you that I'm growing up into all things Christ. And that when people come to me for something in a time of need, that I will have what I claim I have in my life. And that they'll taste you and I'll be able to plant the seed of your word in their life. And that seed can one day grow be nourished, and it too can become an oak of righteousness, and it can begin to bear fruit. Does it make sense? Yes. Come on, so let's just stand. I want to pray. And I felt we, we say this verse a lot, but when you when you compare yourself to one another, you do great harm. And I think there's a an easy temptation to look at someone else. And we might not say it out loud, but there's a thought of like, oh yeah, that person. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they can become a 10 out of 10 in this area of their life. But me, just what I've been through, my family, just my personality, this area, I feel like the best I could do is become a four. And you like limit yourself of what you think the Lord could do in an area of your life. As if the Lord who fashioned you and knew you outside of eternity, before you were born, put his spirit inside of you. And it's like, Vlad, I'm, 
dude, I'm sorry. The best you can do, four out of 10, we'll call it good. Brent, I gave you a little extra sauce. Like you, you, got, you got an eight. Merle, we know you're a 10. Like as if the Lord would do that, but we put a cap on ourselves of what's available because we judge ourselves according to ourselves. Come on, the standard is Jesus. And he said, follow me. He said, follow me. It wasn't this like, hey, come here real quick and do this one thing for me. He said, every area of your life, every belief about yourself, everything you have your hand to, yield it to me, hold it up to the standard of the word and let me be the judge of who you're supposed to become because it's gonna look a whole, like, a whole lot like Jesus. Because it says the spirit of truth will come. The spirit of truth. He's not a warm, fuzzy feeling that we get in worship. Sometimes he is. But he's a spirit of truth sent from the Father to lead you and guide you into righteousness so that your life looks like Jesus. Come on, that's the call. That's the call. Get alone with the Lord this week and just say, Lord, I wanna take, not, not with shame, not with condemnation, because they, they, they try to come knocking, but just say, Holy Spirit, would you, would you take inventory of my life this week? Would you show me areas in my marriage that I've just kind of settled? This kind of is what it is. Areas that I've kind of just propped up my feet and I've been coasting. Like get alone with the Lord this week and open up the word and let it open up your life. Repent, put off the old and put on Christ. Can we do that? Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we just say thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Jesus, we thank you for your leadership. We thank you for paying the highest price for us. We thank you for everything that is available. And Lord, we ask that you would come right now and show us areas in our life that we're living less than what's available and what was paid for. Because you paid for it, it's got our name on it, and it's sitting under the Christmas tree. May we receive everything that you paid for. Would shame and condemnation be shattered in our life? Would anxiety be broken? Would years of, of quiet addiction, that if people knew, God, they would be, would be so afraid. Would those things be broken in a moment? as we put off the old and put on Christ and are made into your image. So Jesus, we commit to you this week. Holy Spirit, come and reveal Jesus in our life. It's an honor to serve you. We love you so much, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have an awesome Sunday. And the prayer team will be available for prayer right this way.